Turn with me real quick to 2 Timothy, and I'm going to give you two verses that, that help you understand inspiration, okay? Um, 2 Timothy is the first one. You should have learned this probably if you went to Sunday school all your life. You know it's the famous verse. 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17 says this, all scripture is given by inspiration. The, the word inspiration uh, is the word theo, uh, which is the word for God, and then pneustos, pneu, whoop, that's a epsilon, pneustos. Um, boy, I haven't written that in so long, probably not spelled right, but it means God breathes out. Same word that pneumonia comes from, new, new, spirit. So it's God, breath, breathes out. So the first fact is Scripture is breathed out by God. So uh, it's like the best description of how we got our Bibles is, fact number one, God says he breathed it out. But you say, but the writing of David's a little bit different than Luke and John and Isaiah. Yo, oh, yeah. You ever seen stained glass? Stained glass is, is glass with color in it, but when pure light shines through the glass, it picks up the color, but it retains pure light. When God breathed out his word, the pure message that came from God never was, was polluted, but it took on the character of Peter. Peter uses so many words. No, Peter's grammar would make an English teacher pull their hair out. I mean, it's terrible. Paul was a wordsmith. Paul, Paul used his analytical mind to build words. Luke writes Greek on the same level as the greatest Greek writers of history. Isaiah, Isaiah's Hebrew is, is unbelievable. David's is so, so in touch with people. Isaiah's is so elevated. And yet all of them are communicating the pure message. And notice what it says here. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable. That means every book of the Bible. It doesn't matter if, if it's Matthew 5 through 7, it's all profitable for doctrine. If it's something from Leviticus, it's profitable for doctrine. All Scripture breathed out by God is profitable for doctrine or for reproof or for correction or for instruction in righteousness. Now, real quickly, go with me to 2 Peter. Here's the last thing before we go. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 21. And here's the second. Uh, and, and then I'm going to explain about the question. But I want to lay the, uh, this word is pheromenoi, something like that. It's the word carried along. Uh, it says here, For prophecy never came by the will of man, People didn't say, hey, I'm going to write the Bible today. But holy men of God spake as they were pheromenoid. That's a word for a sailboat. It's, it's when you have your sail up, the wind blows you the direction that the wind is blowing. And so two things here, that, that they, they were directed by God. That's what the word pheromenoi means, directed by God. And the word Theopneustos means that what came out of them was pure. It was the breath of God. So, let's get to the question. The question originally was, did the Bible writers, because it says the book of Jasher, and because Jude uses the apocryphal book of Enoch and quotes something from it, and also, like, did, did Noah know something or carry a document about Adam, the genealogy or something, on the ark? Was there any collection of documents? And we say yes. Definitely there was. We know there was. We know that because Luke went out and interviewed people. Luke, it says, I set about to set an orderly record. And he goes, and you can tell he has first. The reason we know that is in, in the book of Acts. When Luke's there, he says we, and when he's not there, he says they. And so we know that there is, a, there is the collection of information. They were using materials. But whenever they did use it, they were they were pheromenoid by the Lord. They, whenever they quote from the annals of the kings of Judah, whoever wrote the, the record book of what went on in, in the court of the kings of Israel and Judah wasn't necessarily inspired, but when the prophet included that, the Spirit of God directed what he included. 
And when he put it in the Bible, it became the pure word of God. You say, but how do we know that we have what they wrote? Because the Bible was never out of the custodianship of the priests, the prophets, and the apostles. If you think about it, the Bible was never out of their touch. It was always under the, until the Bible was completed, the scriptures were completed, the Old Testament was completed, the prophets and the priests always had it in their hands. And God allowed the final one, the final scripture writer, Ezra, to take it all, to put it all in the book order that we have today, and that unit he passed on to the intertestamental period that went to Christ. And when Jesus saw what Ezra had collected, which we would call the Masoretic text, because he began the scribes, Jesus said, those are the scriptures. So that's how we know the Old Testament's absolutely flawless, the 39 books we have. Then Jesus said in Matthew, or in John 14, 15, and 16, he says, you guys are going to, I'm going to tell you all things you're going to need, and I'm going to reveal to you, and you're going to take the message from me, and you're going to write it down. And Christ's apostles, or associates of the apostles. Mark was a, an associate of Peter, and that's how he wrote his gospel. It's the gospel of Peter with Mark writing it down. Luke was an associate of Paul, so he wrote down Luke and Acts under Paul's supervision. James was an associate of Jesus Christ himself, his earthly brother, and he was one that was revered by the apostles, so he was under their tutelage and watch over. And so every one of the 27 books of the New Testament, every one of the 39 books of the Old Testament, were always under the prophet, priest, oversight, or under the apostles' oversight. But every word of God is pure. It's like silver refined in a fire because God breathed it out. And if they collected stuff from the book of Jasher or from the annals of the kings of Judah or from some apocryphal book, all truth is God's truth. If they included it, it was part of the inspired record. Now, did you know that not every word in the Bible is true in the sense that you should do it? There are words from the devil. The devil tempted people to do things, and lying spirits went out from the Lord, from the, the angels before the Lord, the fallen angels, and said words that you should not emulate. But the recording of them was absolutely inspired, infallible, and flawless, and pure. So when you open your Bible, you can have a confidence. You say, well, aren't there mistakes and differences in the manuscripts? Yes, there are. In the New Testament, there are almost none in the Old Testament because they used to count every word. In the New Testament, there are 250 pages of Greek text, and one half of one of those 250 pages is the total amount of discrepancies there are in the whole New Testament, and most of them are the spellings of names. In fact, one of the most common ones is, is whether an uh, omicron, that's an omicron, or a theta, that's a theta. Do you see the difference between the two of them? A bar. A lot of, of things in the Bible are, we don't know if it's an omicron or a theta. And that comes to, in the whole text of the New Testament, one half of one page. And by the way, there is no doctrine any doctrine of any significance that's represented in that one half of one page of discrepancies. So you know what that means? You don't have to even learn Greek. You have the Word of God in front of you. A translation of it, so you should always bear in mind it's a translation, but is the very pure Word of God.